Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today, we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 118. The tongue is a small member, but it does big things. A religious who does not keep silence will never attain holiness. That is, she will never become a saint. Let her not delude herself, unless it is the Spirit of God who is speaking through her, for then she must not keep silent. But in order to hear the voice of God, one has to have silence in one's soul, and to keep silence. Not a gloomy silence, but an interior silence, that is to say, recollection in God. One can speak a great deal without breaking silence, and on the contrary, one can speak little and be constantly breaking silence. Oh, what irreparable damage it is done by the breach of silence! We cause a lot of harm to our neighbor, but even more to our own selves. In my opinion, and according to my experience, the rule concerning silence should stand in the very first place. God does not give himself to a chattering soul, which, like a drone in a beehive, buzzes around but gathers no honey. A talkative soul is empty inside. It lacks both the essential virtues and intimacy with God. A deep interior life, one of gentle peace and of that silence where the Lord dwells, is quite out of the question. A soul that has never tasted the sweetness of inner silence is a restless spirit which disturbs the silence of others. I have seen many souls in the depths of hell for not having kept their silence. They told me so themselves when I asked them what was the cause of their undoing. These were souls of religious. My God, what an agony it is to think that they not only might have been in heaven, but they might even have become saints. O oh, Jesus, have mercy. I tremble to think that I have to give an account of my tongue. There is life, but there is also death in the tongue. Sometimes we kill with the tongue. We commit real murders, and we are still to regard that as a small thing? I truly do not understand such consciences. I have known a person who, when she learned from someone that a certain thing was being said about her, fell seriously ill. She lost a good deal of blood and shed many tears, and the outcome was very sad. It was not the sword that did all this, but the tongue. O oh, my silent Jesus, have mercy on us. I have wandered onto the subject of silence, but this is not what I wanted to speak about, but rather about the soul's life with God and about its response to grace. When a soul has been cleansed and the Lord is on intimate terms with it, it begins to apply all its inner force in striving after God. Yet the soul cannot do anything of itself. God alone arranges everything. The soul knows this and is mindful of it. It is still in exile and understands well that there may yet come cloudy and rainy days. But it must now look upon things differently from what it had up to now. It does not seek reassurance in a false peace, but makes ready for battle. It knows it comes from a warrior race. It is now much more aware of everything. It knows that it is of royal stock. It is concerned with all that is great and holy. Here, St. Faustina speaks about the tongue and the importance of keeping silence. She very clearly says that a religious who doesn't keep silence will never attain holiness or become a saint. We can all learn from this admonition. The great secret of the spiritual life is that God wants to communicate with us. He wants to reveal himself to us. If we want to be in contact with God, we have to listen. That's why for religious, a time each day for meditation and contemplation is so important so that we can open our hearts to what God wants to say to us. Remember the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector? The Pharisee did not do a lot of listening, just talking. 
God can't get through to us if we're constantly talking and if there's constant noise in our lives. It's important sometimes to turn off the TV, to turn off the social media, and to try to hear what God wants to say to us. We also have to have have to give an accounting of our, our lives to God, and especially of the way that we used our tongue. Uh, we have to be careful of all unnecessary and hurtful things that we've said to people. We can really hurt people by what we say to them. Finally, St. Faustina returns to the subject of the soul who has been purified by God. It is like that soul has been through a battle and has become a warrior. It is changed by the experience and by the graces received. We are all part of the royal family since Jesus is the King of Kings. We are baptized. We are one family in Christ. So we want to each be concerned with great and holy things like St. Faustina was. Jesus wants to purify and prepare each of us for the future. Whatever mission he has for us here on earth and for our future to be with him in heaven, a, a future that will last forever. <laughs>